Hey, Rick. Um, been Sorry. seeing a lot of uh, posts from you on social media reacting to, to doctors, to nurses, to pe basically people on the front lines. And I wanted to ask, is there someone in your life that, that has been touched by that or have you just uh, been sensitive to it for another reason? I'm curious about that. I mean, I, I, I have some people I know, but it, it's, I'm just sensitive because, you know, sometimes you go through your daily life, you know, we're, oh, we're not playing hockey and, you know, sitting around the house and, you know, you get the, you know, you talk to people and they're like, this, uh, this is terrible. And then the next thing you know, I was just thinking about, you know, we were watching the news all the time, um, like who are taking care of these people? It's the frontline people. I just, I just thought it was just something that, um, you know, you know, for me to, just how these guys have uh, put their life on the line for everybody else. It's just, you know, so sometimes you see me, you're like, I find myself being a little selfish because oh, I want, you know, I, I listen, I miss hockey so much, but when I just look at the day-to-day -day life people have to do right now, how they're sacrificing, I just felt it was, uh, you know, whether the organ even the organization talked to some players and stuff, we were just talking about how, how the gratitude of all these people, the doctors, the nurses, the frontline people, even the drivers, um, you know, first responders, you know, so, you know, I know I'm rambling, but it's just, it's dear to my heart because I, I can, I, I'm, I just, the gratitude for these people, that basically what it comes down to. Yeah. And, and you mentioned how much you miss hockey. I'm just curious what this yeah. is like for someone like you, who is such a pet competitor at heart to just, just be sitting there not being able to do anything. Yeah. I, I mean, I think, you know, I think taking hockey for granted, I think, uh, I think, you know, for myself, you take it for granted. Um, you know, uh, you love the fire, you like the competition, and when you don't, you know, that's taken away from you. It's tough. Uh, it's a short term. I think it's going to be a short term. I think we're going to get through this, but um, I think when we all come back from this and, and anything, I think we're not going to take anything in life for granted. Um, and, you know, I, I just think that for me, hockey, competition, you know, going to the rink every day, strategize and, you know, trying to make players better, I think is something that's in our daily life that we, we crave. And uh, boy, do we sure miss it. You still find yourself doing all that strategizing, all the things that are running through your head? Well, actually, uh, I've been talking to some of the coaches uh, periodically. We've been, actually, I, I took the, the um, my computer out about four days ago, and I started watching video again uh, to try to get get my brain wrapped about a few things. And uh, actually, in about a few days, the coaches are going to get together via Zoom, and we're going to we, we have questions we're going to ask each other. You know, what happened uh, this year? What, what could we have done better? What, how can we be better coaches? Uh, what can we do better in practice? You know, what happened the last six, seven weeks? You know, why did we go 14 and 17 when we were in first? But, like, these are the questions that I think it's important to talk about now and not wait till you go back to playing. Um, it's almost like exit meetings, right? You want to kind of, you're, you're, you're pro, you know, you're kind of fast-tracking to these exit meetings. And then I'll probably, be in John will probably talk to players next week individually. I think that's something we want to do and um, see what's, what's in their head, their mind, how they can improve. I, I think this is a good exercise for our organization because it keeps your mind going. It keeps the juices going. Okay. Thanks, Rick. And Rick, speaking of that, um, how have your players, how the guys dealt with all this? Are they, you know, group chatting? Are they having Zoom meetings together, still talking hockey, uh, just trying to, you know, mentally cope with this whole thing? How have your, how's your team dealt with this? you got to get out there and move around. You know, I, I think guys are going for runs. They're, they're exercising. Our, our strength coaches have delivered equipment to get some guys' homes that are in town. Uh, I think that's important. So that's a, the mental part and the physical part is important for, for our team in this uh, during this time, for sure. And I think guys have done a nice job, apparently, for what I've heard, of getting together in small groups, one or two guys, um, and they just kind of they branch off, you know. Hey, Coach Craig Fui with ABC 15. Hey, can I just get your initial reaction, what you thought your – Close to the end of the regular season, you're trying to make a run. You're trying to get in the playoffs. What were your initial thoughts when this hit and the season came to a crashing halt? Well, I think it was uh, for three, four days. It was the it was the unknown was killing everybody because nobody knew what this was. You know, yeah, what, what you know where it, where it can take us. And I'll be honest, with you, everybody just thought, okay, it's going to be a week or two. We'll, we'll resume. But I mean, obviously, the magnitude and um, what has happened, um, you, you, you didn't even. You know, for the first week, two weeks, it's like the question you're talking to players or GM or owners like, oh, what are we going to do next? Is it next month? Are, we, are they going to do a playoff format? How are we going to start the regular season? It was a lot of what ifs. Now it's pretty well. Guys know it's pretty shut down for at least two, three months. I mean, um, I mean I, I'm just guessing it's going to be that long. Um, so 
those are just the questions of the unknown. And that was the hardest part. Now you got to get on with your life. Uh, you know, sitting around and just asking questions and calling people and the what ifs. I think right now you just got to get a routine. We're the one thing with hockey players and coaches, we're routine, routine guys. When you take routine away from us, we get a little crazy, a little stir crazy. So um, you got to get a routine going, you know, whether whatever you do in the morning or in the afternoon or night, I think it's important that we get in these routines. So, Coach, once it gets started back up, how much time do you need to get ice ready to get game ready? Well, that's a good question. I mean, I don't know. I mean, for me, the safety of the player is number one. I mean, if I, I used to be a former player. So, you know, I'm not sure three, four, five days is enough after, the, uh, you know, two or three-month layoff. So, um, you know, I've heard uh, two weeks. I've heard 10 days. I've heard those numbers kicked around. Um, but for me, it's the safety of the players. Like, I would never want to start this thing up. Uh, and less player, you know, because we're, we're the only sport really where you, you need a, you need you need an ice rink, you need skates, you need there's some stuff that you just you know basketball you just got shorts and the basketball and you just go and you can do other things you know football the same thing baseball you can go in the park with a bat and ball but we don't have ice and that's something that's important for players to have uh, when we get back into this thing. Rick, what do you? Can I go to Matt Lehman next? Yeah. Hey Rick, uh, good to see you again. Hope you're doing well. Um, my question, I mean, you talked about it a little bit looking at film and things like that, but I'm, I'm kind of curious more broadly, how are you spending your time, um, in, in this, in this time, both professionally and personally, what are you doing all day? Well, I just, uh, actually, uh, been rollerblading the last week. So that's something I've got it, got into, I'm kind of getting into it in the morning, uh, put a little mix of, uh, gym in, in the garage. So I get, I try to get a couple of workouts and it, it usually it, it kind of breaks up the day for me. Um, you know, I, I watch the news like everybody. I, I try not to watch this too much because I found myself I'm glued to the to the news channel. Um, you know, then uh, uh, for the business part of the, uh, my, my profession, I've been kind of right now, I'm trying to figure out better ways to coach, our, our, how our staff can come better, how we can get information to the players better. I think there's a new way of coaching. I, and we've been kind of kicking out different ideas around. I think it's, you know, more individualized more than ever. And I think our staff's going to have to get better at taking smaller groups. I know the one thing that we were discussing, there's not a lot of time of the day at the rink. We only have one sheet of ice. There's, there's some obstacles there, but I think there's a, a different way we can get information to our players and we've been kicking ideas around. So um, for the last 10 days, talking to John Chike almost every day about that sort of stuff that we're trying to do uh, that could help for this year or next year. Go to uh, Rick Moore with the Republic. Hey, Rick, uh, it's good to see you. I hope you and your family is doing well. I uh, kind of want to piggyback off what you said, uh, kind of answering Craig's initial question, the, the individual meetings and kind of using this period as, as a self-reflection uh, on your team. Obviously, I know you want to be playing regular season games right now, but are there some positives that maybe can come from this self-reflecting time and kind of being able to maybe analyze things more at this point in the season than you otherwise would be able to? Yeah, they, yeah, you're right. The unfortunate, the unfortunate, unfortunate thing is we're starting a bit early, so there's still parts of the season left. So um, you know, guys had we still had opportunity, even though the window was closing. I still think you know, with the schedule, with having so many home games, you know, if you could have rattled some wins off, we could have got back in this. So saying that, at the end of the year, people when the season's over, they reflect what they have to do better. I, I think. Uh, more than ever, this, you know, when we start individual meetings, myself and John, um, I think the self-reflection as players, coaches, uh, what we can do better, it should start now. I mean, you know, as of now, the president says we're going to be locked up uh, in our houses for another month. So there's really no reason why you can't still improve yourself as a hockey player right now. You know, if your guy that's uh, leg strength was a little weak this year, you can work on your legs. You know, uh, you can make, you know, you can do a shooting gallery in your, in your, your garages. You know, there's, we got pucks where you can get players, they can shoot pucks in their, in their, in their garage. You can stick handle it. There's skill work you can do. There's still stuff you can do, but you, you know, that's the stuff that I really want to uh, address the players that there's some guys, you know, yeah, we know some guys have had some tough years, not great years. Well, let's do something about it. Uh, and it's no different than the coaching staff. You know, how can we do better as a coaching staff? Um, where when it's a 2-2 hockey game in the third period, maybe we can come out on the right side of it than on the wrong side the, the last month, it seemed like. So there's a lot of self-reflection. Just coaches, players, you know, I've talked to John about it, where we can all get better. And I think it starts when you wake up in the morning today. I mean, there's no reason why you can't, especially uh, with the, you know, the lifestyle we're living right now is that everybody's cooped up in their house. 
is there something you can do better? And I think that's something important that we can all reflect on. Cam Cox with NBC 12. Coach, hope everything is going well, sir. It's good to talk to you. Uh, just had a question, it's kind of a goofy one. Uh, I know there's a YouTube video of you back in the day cooking at your house, uh, making pasta. Have your cooking improved <laughs> uh, now that you uh, are cooped up in your house? Yeah, I might have to do a sequel to that. I'm going to, you know, like, I, I watch all these guys with different videos and stuff. It's hilarious. I love, you know, they, uh, people put stuff on social media. I think it keeps people, uh, you know, their humor and stuff. But yeah, the old pasta thing. I might have to do a version like what? That was 92, what, 30 years later. Maybe a pasta version two, sequel. Hey, might you, be a little you different. Always, you can always put out some recipes, you know, now that you have some time on your hands. What's that? You can always put out some recipes now that you got some, some time on your hands. Yeah. Well, listen, there's so much time. That's the, that's the thing. Like, there's a, you know, I was honestly thinking of taking an online course or something. I mean, um, it's amazing when you're at your home or, you know, when you're, when you're in your, your house for so long, how uh, you can really get bored or just get lazy. You know, you just, you know, you sit on the couch, you watch the news. But I think the last week, I think, or two weeks for me personally, I've been, I've been doing a lot more things because I know that, you know, we're in, we're in the situation we are. Um, you know, we're trying to get this world safe and make people that quarantine themselves. So I think it's important to keep your mind busy. Go to uh, Alex Kinkoff with Coaches.com. Hey, Coach. Uh, Alex Kinkoff here. Good good to see you. Hope the family hey, is uh, safe and healthy. Um, you always preach uh, mental strength, mental health. Um, and obviously, when you preach that during the season, you're relating it to sport. How can you take the importance of mental strength right now and really relate it to what everybody's going through during this difficult time? Yeah, great question. I mean, uh, if you're talking about mental toughness and mental strength, you would be all being tested right now. Um, you know, it's easy to, uh, you know, to, 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 you know, like I said, just get uh, lazy um, in your mind. You know, you just, you know, the poor is me and just sitting around. I think there's positive things that we can come from this. Um, there's so many people, that, you know, I, I'm blessed. You know, we're sitting at home, we're, we're safe in our, in our homes, and there's people just battling for their lives right now. Um, so the mental toughness for me, just taking it away, just selfishly talking hockey, I think right now as players and coaches, you know, you can exercise mental toughness right now, you know, uh, just make sure you get in a routine. Uh, you know, if I'm, if I'm a player right now, maybe, uh, and we were talking about just sending them some video clips, maybe making them partake in some stuff that, you know, what could they have done better? What can the coaches do better? Maybe analyze, you know, a game here and there. I think doing that really helps mental toughness i think it helps uh you know makes your team better too especially in the, in the in the cards we're dealt right now that you know you're at home and uh, maybe there's just some things that we can do to to help for next year and uh i know you've had plenty of time to reflect on the 70 games played so far this season is there a particular moment or an event uh, something that happened with the team this season that that really resonated with you that sticks with you as being special um, well, you know, I, I, just the ebbs and flows of a season, I think that's something that uh, I'm really reflect on because, you know, you, you know, you come out and you, you, come, you know, for half the year, 50 games or whatever, you know, you have a strong, you know, the team was playing very strong and had a good identity. And, and, and the last, I say 20, you know, we, you know, we we're 25, we had some good games in there, but we were basically, you know, three games under 500 and the questions you know, you always ask the coach, you know, why? You know, what are the reasons why? How come? Are we just not good enough? Is it because of this? Was it injuries? Was it too many guys, you know, at the same time hit the wall? Uh, these are just questions you ask yourself. At, but at the end of the day, uh, we can do something about it. And that's something that we, we talk about, you know, what are you willing to do to get better? Um, we have some players that obviously have to raise the bar. They, uh, there's another level in there. The coaching staff has to, you know, take responsibility also. Uh, to be better, uh, and then we'll go from there. Um, but like I said, you know, we're four points out of a playoff spot. Uh, is there something we could have done different? That's the questions that we're going to ask each other, you know, especially the last couple of weeks, and then, you know, uh, and go from there. Thank you. Next question for talk. Anyone on the line? Yeah. Hey, Rick, it's Mark Brown. Can hey, you hear me? Hey. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, Rick, uh, miss you at the Jersey Shore, but I'm sure we'll get there one time. Um, you mentioned the, the slide you guys had just before the uh, pause in the season. And uh, some of us who cover you pretty regularly 
think it might be a lack of scoring. So if the if the season starts up at any one time, does scoring become a priority for you? Uh, with only a few games left, you really need to start thinking about put, putting the puck in the net. Is that a fair observation? Yeah, no, of course. I mean, there's, you know, how many opportunities in a game to, for us to win a game? It's a 2-2 game in the third period, and, you know, we ended up on the wrong side. The other team would score the goal. We didn't. Um, what are the reasons why? That's the questions. Um, you know, it's funny. When I look at game video, I watch a game of our, our, some of the games where um, I remember we'd be up one nothing. and we had numerous chances in the first period, breakaways, uh, empty net chances, uh, power plays, to make it 2 or 3 nothing. Uh, we miss those opportunities. The other team scores. And that, now, now you go to the third period tied where really the first period, you had really good first where, where it should have been up 3 nothing or whatever. And I think that was the biggest problem with our team is the killer instinct to score that goal. Um, you know, we, we, we were, you know, I, 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 there were some games when I, I remember, I remember after talking to you guys after the game, I was pretty upset because, you know, I hate losing. But after watching some of these games, we weren't that bad. And we, if there, there was a, there was a, a chance here or there is the difference of the game. Doesn't mean you play a bad game because guys miss a, a, an empty net or they miss a breakaway. We still played a good game. We just didn't score that goal. So sometimes you got to be careful that we don't overanalyze, uh, you know, these games when you're losing because we've missed chances. And uh, really, I'll be honest with you, this team misses a lot of chances to score goals. Uh, can we get better at scoring? Yeah. Is there some system-wise that we can maybe tweak? Absolutely. But at the end of the day, we had some opportunities that we just didn't put in. And that's something mental toughness. You know, that's where some guys, I believe, you know, work on your game. Shoot pucks right now. Get, get you know, the old fight. I'm sure that the, the, the Crosbys of the world and all these guys, are, you know, they have uh, McDavis. I bet you they're shooting pucks right now as we're speaking. Those, that's why those guys are the best. And we have to take that attitude the same way. We'll go to Nick King with 3TV and CBS 5. Hey, Coach. Uh, you're talking about the rollerblading. How much have you done that? How much would you do that in a typical year? Is that an off-season thing for you? You know what? I haven't, I haven't rollerbladed in years. Uh, I haven't walked as much as I have in years. And it, I'll be honest with you, there's some stuff that I've started to do now because of you know, the, the situation we're in that I will continue to do. I will continue to walk more than ever. I, I love walking. I love exercising outside. I never exercise outside. Usually I go to a gym. Um, there's ways of exercising. It. I find, I'll be honest with you, uh, being outside, exercising, and walking has really uh, kind of rejuvenated me in a, in a, in a way because uh, I've never walked as much as I've walked. I never usually, usually walk. It's always you jump in your car, you go to the rink, you know, you, you're, you're always indoors, you, know, you go outside, you know, maybe go to dinner and stuff. But now I've been outdoors more than ever walking. And um, I, I, I'll continue to do it. So there's – and rollerblading. I'll probably uh, – when this thing – even when we start back up, I'll probably start to rollerblade a couple times a week. I, I enjoyed it because I used to do it 20 years ago. Next question for talk. Anyone on the line? Hey, Coach. Craig Fooley here again from ABC 15. Hey, uh, you mentioned watching the news, not being a hockey yeah. coach. I'm sure you don't get to watch much television during the season. Is there anything you've been watching or binge watching or any favorite TV shows that have come up now recently? Yeah, I mean, I you know catching up on the Ozark and then uh, was it Tiger King? That was something uh, Paul Bissonnette recommended. So I, I think that's everybody's watch. I, I guess everybody's watched. Everybody I talked to has watched it. Um, you know, some old shows that back in the day that my dad used to watch. There's a the, the old comedy uh, classic ones like uh, All in the Family, things like that. My dad used to watch. I, I, I watch that every once in a while. Um, but I try not to watch too much. Like, you know, obviously at nighttime, you, you, you bunker down and you watch a little TV. But during the day, I try not to watch TV. I try to stay busy. Um, you know, I, I know a lot of people, friends of mine are renovating and they're doing stuff around their house and stuff like that. Unfortunately, I don't have anything to renovate because I rent a place. But other than that, uh, you know, uh, go on the Internet, read stuff. Maybe, uh, maybe take, a, you know, if this gets longer, maybe take an online course at something. I don't know. Business. Uh, just just dabble in certain things that to keep your mind going. And then obviously the hockey business is uh, continue to watch video. Uh, think of some different ways of, uh, of coaching. Uh, you know, there's, there's, there's a whole bunch of different things that I want to, uh, we want to change, not so much change as a staff, but we want to kind of look into for, for when we resume how to coach better, and, you know, how to get the information to players a little bit uh, better also. So you got an early review of the Tiger King? Early review? Well, I'll tell you what, it took me a while to get through the first, you know, the first episode. Um, I think everybody uh, kind of like, what is this? And then by the end of it, you're kind of, hey, well, you're hooked on it. You want to see what, what happens at the end. 
Next talk is Mark again. Um, have you been in touch with any of the players or coaches around the league in terms of their feeling and, and, and what they're going through right now? Yeah, I talked to a couple of coaches uh, you know, once or twice a week. A couple of players have texted me. Um, we've had a group uh, meetings on the phone with uh, players, five players at a time with myself and John, just State of the Union, seeing, you know, tell them, give them some information. That was about a, 10 days ago. And then next week, John and I will we'll talk to individually each player uh, for 15, 20 minutes. We'll spend two or three days with, you know, um, you know getting through our, our roster um, and, and, and diving down and, and talking to some of the players and, you know, figuring out how do we get better. And uh, I think that's something that we're going to start to do next week. Thank you. Rick, uh, Matt Lehman here. There's been a lot of um, ideas thrown out there on how to resume the season, um, whether it be going straight into playoffs, doing a 24-team playoff, um, having a few regular season games first, whatever that looks like. Is there a way that you have, have heard about or seen um, that you think is the ideal way that the season should be resumed? What do you think about that stuff? Yeah, you know, that's a real tough question, and it's we all kick it around. It's funny because one of the coaches – I'm not going to mention his name. He's in the playoffs, and he, he thinks that when the season starts, the playoffs should start. And they're in. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. And, and you know what? I have no problem if we had to start. And they said, hey, uh, whoever's in the playoffs in the playoffs. You know, the 70 games is a big sample size. The only thing I'd be bummed out about, guys, I'll be honest, is, you know, we have eight or nine home games to finish the season. We we kind of went through our, ter- you know, our – well, we went through a terrible schedule for about two months. We had to, to kind of eat it a little bit. And I thought maybe this part of the, the schedule – would be in our favor. So that's the only thing that would suck if, if we didn't have a chance to, to get back into it. But yeah, I've heard the different, you know, the 10 teams on each side, you know, the play, you know, maybe uh, 10 and nine play each other to get a, the right to get in. I don't know. There's so many different ways. I'm good with whatever. Uh, I really, I, uh, you know, if they said, Hey, too bad. Only the playoff teams are in. I get it. If they say there's a, you know, 10 teams in each division or uh, conference again, I'm good with that. So it really doesn't matter to me. I, it, it's, it's a hard job and it's a hard way of trying to find a fair system as it is. So I, I don't really, I don't even know what the, the, the right thing, the right call would be to be honest with you. Any more questions for talk? Yeah, talk uh, one more from me. I'm just curious, um, just besides hockey, um, what are you most looking forward to, uh, to getting to do or experience once this is all kind of over? What do you miss the most right now? Well, just about your friends and people in general, like, you know, the contact with them, you know, the day, day-to-day stuff, you know, the, you know, just, uh, you know, I, even just walk into Starbucks. I know some of the people that serve the baristas that I know, you know, just even, you know, you, t- you talk for that two minutes, uh, you know, uh, some of the restaurants I go, some of the people and the waitresses and stuff that they, they get to know you, that you, you spend five minutes and you, you talk about life and stuff that, you know, you don't, you know, I haven't seen those type of people. And obviously the players, I miss the players. I mean, you know, you miss the coaches and the organization. Um, and there's some people that, you know, you know, you talk to on the phone a lot, but you don't get to see them. So I, I think it's more contact with people that I'm going to miss. And uh, on a, I'll be honest with my routine, like just getting back into the routine of, uh, you know, you're at the rink at eight o'clock and you have meetings, you know, that I think, uh, I think we won't take that for granted. I, I know I won't take that for granted.